Okay, so this video is being recorded Saturday night, August 9th, 2014. And it's crazy to think about that because in less than 36 hours, August, Monday, August 11th, myself, my wife, my five kids are uprooting ourselves from Houston, Texas, which has been here for the last eight years, to Pittsburgh, freezing Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it's, it's a crazy thing to think that that's happening in less than 36 hours. And I remember a month ago, when people in the community started finding out that, that the Zatovskis are leaving from Houston to Pittsburgh, they say, Rabbi Zatovsky, when are you leaving? I said, I'm leaving a month. Oh, a month? Eh, it's plenty of time. You'll be around forever, a month. Rabbi Zatovsky, when are you leaving? Three and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks? Eh, okay, we'll see you around. Three and a half weeks. And all of a sudden, 36 hours, we're on the flight. We're leaving to Pittsburgh. The whole month flew by. I was thinking about this, it's like they, I had this feeling of deja vu, like I felt this before, like you know, this whole month, and then boom, this thing, you're, you're right there already. And I was thinking, you know what, this happens every single year, the month of El. The month of El is the month right before Rosh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and it's a, it's a month to get ready for it, and it's, oh, I have a whole month to get ready for Rosh Hashanah. Eh, three and a half weeks to get ready for Rosh Hashanah. And then, next thing you know, you're grabbing your blue machzer, your blue arts go machzer, and you're running to shul, and that's it, it's Rosh Hashanah right there. And the whole month, the whole month is gone. So I was thinking to myself, what, what, what's the challenge of El? You know, it's a whole month to prepare for Rosh Hashanah. It's a whole month to prepare for the high holidays. So I was thinking, you know, sometimes the challenge is the fact that it's a whole month. It's not like Rosh Hashanah where it's two days, Intense. You could be intense for two days. Go to synagogue. Pray for two days. Yom Kippur one day. Be intense. You know, the month of El is the whole month. It's hard to, it's hard to get a handle on it. So I was thinking, what's the best way to, to tap into the potential of El? And I want to tell you an unbelievable story that, that, that a good friend of mine told me. I'll tell you, his name is Mike. So we had like, this, this, um, this group meeting with different uh, psychologists and counselors and social workers. And this guy Mike was there, and I don't know Mike that well. The only thing I tell you about Mike, he's always on his cell phone. If you ask me, Rabbi Sussi, you know Mike? I say, yeah, Mike, he's always on his cell phone. So I saw him at this meeting, this group, this group uh, consultation meeting, and I said, I said, Mike, how's it going? He said, oh, it's good. He just, he just came back from a cruise. I said, really, how was it? So he told me an unbelievable story. He told me that he's on, he's sitting by the pool with his wife on this cruise. It's a week cruise. He's sitting by the pool. And he's on, you know, he's chilling out with his wife, he's on his phone, and he looks up from his phone, and his wife's not near him. His wife's not next to him near the pool. Five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes. He says, where, where is she? So he gets up, he starts looking for his wife. He goes to the bar, he goes to the other pool, goes to the tennis courts on, 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 this, on this cruise ship. He can't find her. So he goes to the room. So he goes to the room, and he's about to open the door, he hears his wife on the phone. And his wife said, and he hears his wife say, she said, I don't care, I'll pay up to $5,000. Let me know if it's going to work and charge your account up to $5,000. So Mike's like, what in the world is going on? He opens, so he knocks on the door, opens it up, and he says, honey, I'm looking for you. And then I, I hear something about $5,000, the account, what, what's going on? So she said, I don't want to talk about it. So honey, five grand. You know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I want to know what you're talking about. She goes, you know what? I just called Sprint or AT&T, and I told him on a cruise my husband, who has not given me one minute, has not focused on me for one minute on this cruise, and I asked them, I'll pay them to disconnect your phone for an hour a day for the next week we're on this cruise. Whatever they could do, I would tell them I'll pay them up to $5,000, just disconnect the phone for a week. So my wife's like, okay. Anyway, a couple minutes later, they walk back to the pool, and they're sitting there, you know, not really talking. Anyway, about an hour later, she gets a phone call from Sprint or AT&T that they, they can't do it. They just, they, they can't disconnect the phone. It's impossible. So Mike, the good husband that he is, starts laughing. You know, he's laughing. He can't believe it. She did this whole thing. Now, he laughed a little too hard because she took the phone and threw it to the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> so that was the end of the phone. But I think from what she wanted to do, we learned something about L. L is like a cruise. The, the sages say that L is, is injecting with potential 
for us to form a relationship with, with Hashem. Hashem is close to us during El. And we need to tap into that energy, that potential. Hashem is waiting for us to tap into that. So I, I think from Mike's wife, we, we, we could learn how to do that. You know, for the next 29 days of El, of, of the month of El, every day, two minutes, three minutes, on the bus, on the, on the car ride home, at your desk, in your bed at night, in the shower, two minutes a day. Start thinking to yourself, where am I holding? Has my commitment to Judaism? Am I going to enough classes? Am I, am I studying enough Torah? Am I treating my, am I treating my spouse the right way? Am I, what are my goals? Am I, am, am I who I want to be? That is the goal of El, and if you do that every day, the whole Rosh Hashanah will be a different Rosh Hashanah. The whole Yom Kippur will be a different Yom Kippur. I just end up with one line I saw in Regis Digest that regret isn't, it's not a lot about what you did. Regret is a lot about what you didn't do. And you know, how many L's could go by and we don't take advantage of it. And we, we regret that we didn't utilize that time. The opportunity that we have to take advantage of this, of this potential, of this relationship with Hashem that's waiting for us. So hopefully we'll take, we'll take advantage of that, we'll use that time, and we'll have a happy and healthy New Year.